Hemolytic transfusion reactions in patients with haemoglobinopathies, insights from SHOT. This video will cover key trends in transfusion errors leading to hemolytic transfusion reactions in patients with haemoglobinopathies and suggest strategies for reducing these errors. Haemoglobinopathies are genetic conditions which affect haemoglobin, the oxygen carrying part of the blood. These changes in haemoglobin makeup can affect the function and structure of red blood cells and lead to conditions such as sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia. Sickle cell disease, known as SCD, affects approximately 15,000 people in the UK and 1 in 76 babies born in the UK carry sickle cell trait. Beta thalassemia affects approximately 1,000 people with around 214,000 carriers. Hemolytic transfusion reactions, known as HTR, occur when antibodies in the patient's plasma react with antigens on transfused red blood cells, causing hemolysis. This can have serious clinical impacts, such as anemia, kidney damage, and death. People with haemoglobinopathies are at an increased risk of hemolytic transfusion reactions due to the high volume of transfusions received and increased rates of allo immunization. Mismatches in ethnicity between the UK blood donor population and the majority of people with haemoglobinopathies also contributes to higher rates of allo immunization. Further complications also occur in pregnant patients with haemoglobinopathies. There are other specific requirements to consider when selecting blood for patients with haemoglobinopathies that may be overlooked when shared care is suboptimal. Both groups require blood which matches the patient's RH and KEL phenotype and need to be transfused with blood which is negative for any corresponding alloantibodies the patient may have formed. Patients with sickle cell disease also require blood which is haemoglobin S negative and where possible it should be less than 10 days old. Testing for patients with haemoglobinopathies can be complicated as it is not always possible to detect all historical antibodies and there may be difficulties with phenotyping in chronically transfused patients. Patients with SCD often have shared care and transfusion labs may not be informed that the patient has sickle cell disease, has been recently transfused, has a record of antibodies, has been phenotyped or has been genotyped nationally. HTRs can also be overlooked as they often present a sickle cell crisis. These combined factors mean the patient doesn't always get the full laboratory testing required or blood that is negative for the required antigens. In these cases, the patient is at an increased risk of avoidable hemolytic transfusion reaction following an anamnestic response or avoidable allo immunization. Looking at data over the past 10 years, errors reported to SHOT mainly involve hemolytic transfusion reactions and specific requirements not met for patients with SCD and febrile allergic and hypotensive reactions and specific requirements not met for patients with thalassemia. Preventing alloimmunization must be a priority when managing patients with haemoglobin disorders. All transfusions should have a clear indication and be authorised by a haematology team. And any historical antibody should be clearly documented in clinical notes and transfusion records, including national databases such as Specialist Services Electronic Reporting using SunQuest Integrated Clinical Environment, known as SPICE in England. The following is a real case reported to SHOT involving care of a patient with SCD. A woman was under shared care between two different hospitals. She required specialist surgery at another centre which was not her usual base. She had a history of anti-S, anti-E, anti-FYA, anti-FYB and anti-FY3. She had been transfused with appropriate phenotype blood and the antibodies were not detectable for several years. She underwent preoperative exchange transfusion at the specialist centre with eight units. Neither her base hospital transfusion laboratory records nor SPICE data were accessed for her antibody history. Four days later, she presented to her own hospital unwell with haemoglobinuria was initially thought to be in sickle cell crisis. However, this was a delayed hemolytic transfusion reaction associated with anti-FYA and anti-FY3, which were identified in the Eluit she made a full recovery. Patients with haemoglobinopathies are also at increased risk of hyperhemolysis. This is a severe, 
life-threatening transfusion reaction with worsening hemolysis affecting transfused red cells and the patient's own red cells. It results in a reduction in the patient's hemoglobin to below pre-transfusion levels, which is often associated with a reticulopenia. There are two types of hyperhemolysis, acute and delayed. Differentiating hyperhemolysis reactions and other hemolytic transfusion reactions can be difficult. First-line treatment of hyperhemolysis is corticosteroids and intravenous immunoglobulin. Various second-line treatments are emerging and supportive therapy is often required. Despite these therapies, extreme anemia and death may still occur, therefore close monitoring of the patients and access to specialist support is essential. In patients with a history of hyperhemolysis, prevention may be more effective than treatment. First-line prevention is administration of corticosteroids and IVIG prior to transfusion, and in adults, rituximab may also be used if necessary as a second-line approach. So what are the key take-home hemovigilance messages? Patients with hemoglobin disorders are vulnerable to transfusion complications. Staff need to be aware about specific requirements, complications and management. Timely and accurate communication between clinical and laboratory teams is essential. Patient awareness and involvement is vital. And initiatives to increase availability of better matched donors are ongoing. Further information can be found through the following organisations' websites. as well as through the SHOT website, www.shotuk.org forward slash resources forward slash current dash resources.